Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, good morning and thank you uh, for giving me a chance to speak. Uh, my presentation is slightly different. You know, this morning you spoke about speed at which software can be built, speed at which hardware can be built, and how problems are solved. But what I found in my experience was that the problems were solved largely by data scientists, by machine learning experts, by technology experts, and so on. And while big progress has been made today, the question in my mind has been, how could we use the combined energy of all of you in this room and make far bigger progress than it's possible? And central to my thinking is the culture that we create in organizations, the culture that drives not moving away from just projects into basic DNA of companies and, and changing our ideas about operating efficiency or risk control or KYC into uh, revenue generation ideas and the way businesses are configured and the way businesses should be structured. And making AI useful not just for data-rich companies like financial companies, health health, healthcare or insurance, but for everybody on this planet. And so here are some thoughts I put together largely driven by experience, some driven by mistakes that we made in trying to make it American Express a very large machine learning and AI uh, company. And there are three things in my mind. You know, uh, the first thing is just embedding AI and ML into the basic DNA of the company, what is critically needed to make that happen. These are all hand-done slides, so there's very little automation in these slides, uh, handwritten by me. And central to everything that we do is a customer. And you'll see the difference how when you think of a customer and not start problems with technology, how things change. And then building capacity in a system, building capacity that is a computer capacity, talent capacity, uh, et cetera, that can drive it forward. And finally, just listening very carefully, learning, adapting, and having a commitment to change as human beings will cause the value of AI and machine learning to a very large value. To date, for other than people in this room, AI and machine learning is this magical field. It's, it's a mythical thing that you put a bunch of data and somehow magical answers show up. And it's not clear to a lot of people other than you, know, you guys in this room is how this happened. What exactly happened? And the first part, in my judgment, has been that the innovation in this world will come not just from data scientists and engineers, it'll come from the basic grassroots of a company, it'll come from the board of directors and top management of the company as well, and all of them need to sort of align with each other so that innovation can happen as a steady exercise and get embedded into the culture of the company. And I'm sort of right now asking that all of us think through how you can sort of design even like a quarterly course for uh, CEOs and boards uh, that would give them an engineering or intuitive understanding of what AI is all about and what ML is all about, like the way they have understanding of products and services in a company, and they can sort of provide good guidance on where to go, and, and they can contribute into this exercise. And this is the only way so that it becomes a lasting exercise in its view is uh, very broad. The second area that we sort of think through is always start problems from a customer point of view. This way you think of customer as sitting on the same side of table as you, and you provide products that you want yourself to buy, and you provide them with clarity and transparency that the customer needs. And we had a lot of discussion about explaining customer the reason why you're taking what action you're also acknowledging that customer also has the same access to AI that we do. The customer can do price comparison by going to price comparison sites. A fraudster in the world in which I worked had probably more technology than the financial company did. They could also do location-based analysis themselves and uh, design the fraud programs to uh, counteract with, with us. So key is, you know, a good example of not starting with customer was people tried to undo the swipe of a card with all sorts of ideas, and they never worked. They will work, and they are working, but only when you think of starting uh, you know, um, these problems from the customer first. And the next thing is that just uh, creating a mechanism for open discussion. 
creating a mechanism for open discussions because a lot of times what happened is that your own instincts are not aligned with the, with the way the idea is. And creating that open discussion, just listening well to everybody in the system. And when people want to do things that are not in sync with your ideas, make, work hard to prove yourself wrong rather than prove the tester wrong. Okay, work hard to prove yourself wrong and commit to the success of other person. And that's how AI and ML innovation comes at a, at a very large pace. One of the things we found in one of the, uh, on the fourth bullet, the, the speeches I see is people think that the first version of AI will produce a better answer. And in our experience, it never did. When we first got involved in logistics regression or AI in late 80s, we could not produce an answer better than our current processes. And when we first got involved in the, uh, gradient boosting machines and random forests, our embedded intelligence in our current process was way higher than the machine learning could produce. We weren't using a FICO score or, a, or another score. We were using that FICO score as an input into our basic risk analysis, and M ML and AI could not improve upon it. Just as we iterated through it and we tried to see sort of what works and what doesn't work, we were able to produce better answers, better genie, better model stability for quicker time to build these models uh, than we did. So the honoring and respecting of current processes will cause the system to just rise and improve at a faster pace. And finally, that you know, one of the lessons we've learned is that AI and ML do not replace people. They just make people to work at a higher level in this world. Uh, in a business like financial services business, where, where you're dealing with thousands and thousands of transactions every minute, a very small error in a transaction can cause, cause disastrous results in a system. And so learning to train your people, creating transparency in the system will cause the culture to just improve at a faster pace. And my appeal to the audience here, my appeal to H2O, my appeal to NVIDIA, IBM, all, all of you in this room is help create these processes, help create these mechanisms by which people plus machines create a better answer, help create training mechanisms by which top officials in the company and the basic grassroots of the company can utilize this knowledge very, very well. And the innovation is not coming just from a unit of people, but across the entire world that you're in. The second area that I think through is just creating capacity. Creating capacity in the system, uh, creating capacity to do analysis, creating capacity to execute, creating turning execution into um, production. And this area I found that our initial thought was we could do it all ourselves. We could buy just a bunch of computers, we could write hardware, we could write software, et cetera. The biggest learning for us came was that we, the importance of collaboration, that we have a lot of data, all financial services companies have a lot of data in this world. Uh, the question, and one of the comments Sri made was that, Data is a team sport. That even that data was not enough. We needed to synthesize data from our data, from partners' data, third-party data, and so on. And ultimately, data becomes the source of the most important competitive advantage in a system. The thing here is that if companies try to build their own logic about XG Boost or GBM or Random Forest, in the long run, that will, I always say, look like an Indian home which is the most beautiful house on the day it was built, and a year later it looks like the ugliest house in the neighborhood because everybody else has improved upon their house and you were not able to maintain that house. So the importance of collaboration and importance of intelligently working with a wide range of people is one that causes capacity to rise at a very fast pace. And there is a level of humility needed in these exercises that you know, basic thinking is that we can do the best. And in many ways, we have good understanding of customers and partners, and we can do the best, but we can't sustain it. And that's how, that's how we encourage strongly the partnerships in driving uh, the final answers together. And finally, the habit of learning and listening. You know, you know all of us come in the world where, where we know our business, we know our customers, we, and we have a good feel for that. But what ML and AI has done to all of us is to turn them, turned us all back into students. 
turn me back into a student and focus me to listen very carefully to what customers are saying. It is also focused, you know, we sort of said, well, let's do a two-dimensional axis. And two-dimensional axis is probability of success that you'll create, and the, si the second dimension is the size of gain. And we will prioritize, because on that basis, and we will use roughly 80% of our capacity to sort of do things that will help us in the near term. And we'll use 20% of the capacity in our model building uh, in which we will let you do whatever you want because we want to fully understand the value of variables. Don't worry about for, for this testing. Don't worry about compliance or anything that you want. Just help determine you know, what aspect of a model produces the most value so that you, then we can work with the right parties and judge whether it's, which battles are worth fighting for and which battles are not. So we've created you know, the wisdom of a test and learn culture, the wisdom of listening uh, very carefully to people. The wisdom of listening very carefully to young people has improved upon the culture by which the development is not just quicker, the development is sort of very broad-based and the execution is very smooth and quick for us. And finally, just, uh, I, you know, I sit here, I look at the presentations and I see, wow, what, how much progress has been made. I'm also, I also understand that the future is a lot brighter than the prog progress today. And wide industry collaborations, you know, just listening well and improving the cultures in our own system will cause this growth to rise at a much faster pace than it ever has. And I certainly, in my, this stage of life, look forward to sort of causing more innovation and just working with a wide range of people to accelerate this progress. And I want to thank, thank H2O. The last few weeks, I've sort of interacted with H2O team a little bit, little bit closer. And I sort of, you, you know, you admire technology in people, you admire capabilities in people, but people that you love most is those that genuinely care for the customers of your company. And that's where I thought the single most important focus. It's not even about the client, it's about the customer of the client. And every discussion you have is how to make that experience better and how to make the life better, how to produce better solutions. And so a great word for H2O for driving this uh, forward. My only recommendation is don't sell the company. You know, don't sell the, don't sell the company. You know, it has a very bright future ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the blessing, Sash, as I would say. Um, it's, it's incredible to see a lifelong student in action and uh, inspiring at once. Um, I, I got a call a couple of days ago from Ash saying that he's watched several of our H2O World videos in the past. This H2O World is live and is being recorded and will be available for folks to watch in the future as well. But he's watched several of them, and he's saying it actually acts as his fitness uh, vehicle because he's on a treadmill watching those one-hour-long videos, and um, it's quite inspiring to see that. Um, it kind of, I mean, the, the slides he had uh, kind of embody some of the core beliefs we have built this company around listening and feedback loops, which feedback beats cash, feedbacks beat even code. Our open source is really about creating that tight connection where people can ask and feel like empowered to ask and give feedback when we're we are steering off the way. Um, so please continue to do that as community and, um, and talking about steering off the way, the, the, the time on this calendar, on the schedule is steered a little behind. So we'd love to have you finish lunch and come back, a series of amazing talks um, this afternoon, three stages, um, and there are a couple of them where I myself will have to be going between the stages. Um, lots of packed content, and um, as, all, as we had an amazing series of talks, and there's a series of one ahead. I look forward to watching together, so thank you.